All right, welcome. Um, all right, well, this is a silly title. Um, first of all, so I'm, I'm Stephen Day. Um, I work for Docker. Um, I do all sorts of stuff at Docker now. Um, and uh, so I started out doing like registry, and um, now I work for the core team and, and do what needs to be done. Um, also working on Containerd, which we announced today. Um, that's me holding a mushroom. Uh, mostly fun. So this talk, um, so, so I don't know. We all have a different experience with metrics in our engineering career, and you know maybe you grew up engineering, maybe you grew up doing whatever. People do all sorts of things, and so um, all of that, all of everything you see, kind of forms your view of uh, of, of of what you of what you apply to engineering, what you bring into software engineering, and. Um, so this one, it, it, I'm going to just talk about my personal experience. Um, and you know, it, it, throughout the years, like you, you know, sometimes you you realize that you're measuring things, and sometimes you don't. And then, uh, you know, one point everything kind of fits together, and then you're like, oh, okay, that's kind of obvious. And then a year later, you realize that that was the wrong way to do it again. So uh, we go through these cycles again and again and again. Um, so the, the first thing I'm going to start out by saying, and, and, this, and this will uh, become obvious during the talk, but you know, why do we why do we do metrics? Um, it's just bec it's the same thing. Why do you have eyes? Why do you have ears? Uh, why can you touch and feel it so that you can like understand uh, your your systems, right? And, and and most importantly, our software systems, right? So um, it, it's it's about answering. Um, so in answering why we do metrics, it's uh, you know, trying to understand why our system's doing what it's doing, uh, and actually just understanding what it's doing sometimes. Um, and in this field, uh, we have a particularly difficult problem because things can do a lot of things without being, um, uh, w without observing them. Um, you know, if a car goes off the road, you know, you can kind of look at it and say, oh, it's in the ditch, okay, uh, maybe we try something else. Uh, you know, whereas is software like a machine can go off, the CPU spikes, and you try to SSH into it, and who knows what's going on? So, um, so it's it's all about observability. So, um, talking about my early years, uh, so I guess my the first thing I could remember was uh, this the science project um, where I had like a, a photosensitive resistor uh, hooked up to a battery and a light, such that uh, if you shone light on the resistor, um, it would turn on the light, right? And this is uh, the basic of all metrics. Is there light on this thing? Well, is this other indicator light on? Yes, right? And then you can also say other things like, oh, the battery's working. Um, the, the wires are conductive and they're moving electricity through. So we can, um, so, so this is, this is like my first my my, my first experience was ex experimenting with these these uh, circuits and, and playing around, and uh, you know metrics weren't a thing. It was just kind of trying to observe your world and see what happened. Um, you know, uh, we, I, I had RC cars, which I was talking about cars before. Like, um, you know, is the motor running? Um, are the wheels spinning? Um, when I turn the little knob on the controller, do the wheels go in that direction? Like the these are all like very very observable things, and this is kind of part of um, the metrics of, of of what you're what you're doing. Um, so the uh, <laughs> kind of, kind of um, the other w one cool thing that I was always obsessed with uh, in chemistry, and and I don't know how old I was when I took chemistry, maybe 16 or 15. Who cares? Um, but uh, titration is is a really really cool way to observe something happening, and um, I don't know if anybody remembers this, but um, you have a flask of some sort of uh, substance, uh, and you want to balance the pH in, in, in it. And so you put this indicator liquid in it, and if it goes above that, if, uh, and at that pH, it will transition between the two colors, right? And so like, um, basically what, you'd, what you could try to do to calibrate some other pH uh, measurement you would try and get it right on the edge of pink, and and you would sit there and balance it. And uh, I, I just remember playing with this and observing it, and just and having this this color, you know, pink or not pink, be uh, your metric was always kind of interesting. And and uh, there's other there's other indicators too. One that goes blue and yellow, and I think there's a there's an orange one. I don't remember all the specifics of that, but um, 
that, you know, this is just a metric and like uh, it, it's observable. We didn't build it, but like, you know, some scientists back in the day kind of figured this out and, and described the process for us so that we could understand it and really um, understand what's going on inside of that little flask there. Um, so the other thing that was a, a, a big in my formative years of metrics, and like I said, this, this talk is a little personal and maybe boring and, you know, you're all here trying to learn about Docker, but um, a big thing for me actually getting, so, so I went to school as, as an electrical engineer, and the reason I went to school as an electrical engineer is because I got into music, because, and I, was, I played guitar and, and um, this stuff always breaks, and so you're fixing circuits, you're soldering, you're putting things back together, and uh, you know, there's all sorts of, met I, mean, I mean, so one thing, right, so your first metric for an electric guitar is like, does it make sound? So you're using your ears to observe that. You're using, um, the other metric is like, uh, you can see um, on here there's two little switches, and one switch turns on the heater elements inside of this tube amp, and the other switch will uh, actually turn on power onto the, onto the power tubes in the power section of this amp. And that's, that's, this is a metric for you, right? So that's, that's just another part of metric. And there's, there's other parts of that too. So like you have a tuner, right? And, and on the tuner, it would kind of go back and forth with this needle and it would show you what frequency each of the strings are vibrating at. So you have that metric as well. And all this stuff is, is in a, it, it's all about observing what's going on. You can, sure you can use your ears, but you know, maybe you're tone deaf. So, uh, <laughs> you know, we have, we have all these great things. Um, to, uh, to feed into that. So uh, when I went to college, um, I, uh, was, I did electrical engineering, to, to take it short. Um, and we had all great, great sorts of tools to deal with uh, metrics and observability. Um, and what the, so one of my favorites uh, was not the oscilloscope. I, I love oscilloscopes and they're great, but um, they're not that fun, but I, and I, but I don't have a picture of the cooler one, which is a network analyzer. A network analyzer, you could take a bunch of little probes and put it on a breadboard on like a, like a bus, and then you could see the bits going by on that bus. So you, if you had, if you hooked up like a microcontroller to like a, uh, like a memory controller or an SRAM unit, you could look at that bus and you could debug what was going on with that, and you could see the actual trace of the ones and zeros going across the uh, you know, across the screen, and um, and that really helped me to understand what was wrong in my circuits on my breadboard, right? And so, like all of this, like you know, we're we're coming up to a um, a, a thesis here. The other one was uh, microcontrollers, right? So we so we learned about network analyzers and how to wire wire these things up. And eventually, we have microcontrollers where we need to know we we can't actually like. Um, instrument each piece of the microcontroller. We have to go in and figure out what it's doing somehow. How. Fortunately, they have these like awesome little ports where you can hook them up to a debugger and you can break and you can step them and you can uh, observe memory and all of that's built into the microcontroller. It's, it's part of the design of the system because otherwise you don't know if it's actually working. Um, so, so it's it, like in that respect, it's, it, it's really handy from, so all this hardware um, going back, we have really great ways of understanding why and how it's working, um, and and this is a this is a huge theme, um, and this this is just I just threw this in here for fun. Um, so in college, I, I had a uh, I was on a human powered submarine project, um, and it was a team of mechanical engineers, and I was the only EE, um, and my entire job was making it so the depth sensor and the attitude sensor could work, and that was it, and that was a lot of work, and it was hard to do, and uh, like it failed because water got it, like a sand got into a O-ring seal and it, and it, and it uh, completely flooded and then we flooded that with uh, rubbing alcohol and then eventually we were able to get it working and uh, lo and behold we know exactly what the depth was and we knew what the attitude was um, and it was, it was, but getting to this data was, was a huge amount of challenge and this is only two metrics, right? And so basically for the, these two metrics we had to build um, uh, we had to get a battery in there. We had to we had to have waterproof wiring. We had to have um, a display sensor and data collection. And this was before Arduino. So, like, we were this was this was a huge pain. Um, the system was actually built with uh, like gum sticks. I don't know if anybody was, remembers. Um, it was like an arm arm controller. Um, but this was uh, you know this was my entire goal in this. Uh, in, on the submarine project was to put in metrics. Um, so um, 
you know, getting the you know getting getting forward a bit in history. There's two um, there's two two projects that I remember were my first live graphs of metrics. Um, the first one was uh, a DNA thermocycler, um, and if you don't know what a thermocycler is. Um, you know, it, it's a word we kind of, it's kind of made up, but the idea is that to do a, uh, to replicate DNA, you need to take it through a set of um, temperature cycles, right? And um, so we built, uh, so these machines are like forty or fifty thousand dollars, and we built one um, for about three thousand dollars. So with uh, with some with some hardware and, uh, and some Peltier coolers, um, but we had to know, we had to do two things with it. We had to control it, and we had to observe what it was doing. And so this is my first like online graph. So we put in an actual embedded uh, microcontroller on the Ethernet, um, and uh, we were able to push uh, temperature targets and plans to actually uh, cycle the reaction block. And we were also um, able to observe the process of that uh, DNA replication uh, over the network. So, um, and then my uh, the, the second the second graph I remember, which was kind of my first professional graph, was. Um, to observe the index size of like a did you mean index for a, for a search site I, I used to work for, um, and, and and we had we had all sorts we had all sorts of like broken stuff. We had this like um, I don't know if anybody remembers the name of it, but it was this thing that you could use Nagios to make graphs, and it was horrible and it would fall apart, and you had to go in and write. Huh? No, it wasn't Ganglia. Oh, I'll get to Ganglia next. <laughs> um, so. Uh, um, yeah, if it, anybody wants to pipe up about this, like, because this was just my this was just my history, but like, um, and, I'll, and I'll get to the soft more more software engineering um, in a second, but like, yeah, we all have our experiences with this stuff, and this is a uh, hopefully a little therapeutic. Um, so software engineering, I'm going to take so like as we get closer to now in time, I'm actually condensing the topics. Um, so the uh, so software engineering. Um, Ganglia, awesome stuff, right? Great. Um, except it was, it's only really good for a few kinds of metrics. Um, and so at one company I was at, we had, it was Ganglia. That's how you did metrics. Um, but this was at the time that like StatsD was coming out and Graphite was coming out and we couldn't use it. And um, it was a huge pain to add new metrics into Ganglia. So what I did was I was like, I really like StatsD's API. But you know it's ganglia over there. So what did what did I do uh, at the time? Like anybody else, I wrote another StatsD server to work with ganglia. Not only that, we had a special wire format for the ganglia metrics. So I had to frame UDP packets from StatsD into the ganglia metrics format that was like proprietary to our deployment uh, to get this to work. Um, <laughs> at that same company, I also. Um, had a to measure a process, and Ganglia was not going to work for this one. And so, what did I do? I loaded like a hundred billion rows into a Postgres table. It worked, kind of. I mean, for the most part, most part it works. Um, but so, so but the, but the whole, the whole like, like all of this stuff, like, it, it, if you if you can kind of see a transition in this story, it's like you start out and um, all of the things that you're doing. Um, with these very physical and, and, and electrical systems that are based in this sensible world of physics, uh, you know, as I transitioned into software engineering, it was like, wait, hold on, these things don't measure themselves. We like it was, it was, or they're not built into it, and so it was, it was kind of surprising. Like, mo like, like, I'll admit, like, I'm not the best software engineer in the regards that I build metrics into everything I build because, like, surely we thought of it, we imagined it, it's going to work like that. Um, so, so, but uh, you know, hopefully we can learn that lesson, and maybe we'll have a better future for uh, our future software engineers and peers. So, um, getting to this slide, um, software engineering is way, way behind. Um, and I was going to show a bunch of pictures of like uh, nuclear control stations and mission control, but we've all seen this. Like, like they're they're it's built into the operating of the thing. If you look at like an operations manual for um, like a like a uh, uh, let's say uh, something on an airplane, right? Part of you do something and then you go check, like oh okay that thing happened on this gauge, right? Like this is part of the operations, and we do do this today, and we and we see this in our operations manuals and run books and and everything like that, and so it's getting in here. 
Um, but you know, if we look at, you know, if th there's a whole bunch of stuff on like instrumenting software engineering, but if we lo go look at this like NIST book, um, I don't know if you, you know this, um, it's called um, uh, a process engineering or like, con or like statistics for uh, like uh, doing like process controls and, 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 and engineering stuff. And it's, it's a really, it's kind of an old book, but it's like available as NIST and it's great. And it's got a bunch of stuff that like if you squint at it, it's almost identical to what we do uh, in, our, in our day to day. So um, like all of this stuff that's like, I don't know, I, f I feel like it's new to software engineering um, has been done for years. So uh, like everything, like every field. If you go into other fields, it's, 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 it's very much like this. There's things that are new in that field, but, but really they're kind of uh, redone. Um, so uh, moving on, so, so metrics. Um, the, the idea behind um, metrics in the, the uh, and what we, what I talk about in, in showing you this history is like it's all what, what we really want to do is control what our things are doing. We have all this money dumped into these machines or the, the cloud, uh, wherever you want to wherever you want to run your infrastructure. Um, and what we're trying to do is increase our observability so that we can increase our controllability. And what it looks like, and I I I, I purpose this slide for for another talk actually, um, because. It turns out observability is very, very, very important in most of software engineering. And so I have another slide that talks about failures, and it's all about observing the failure versus not observing the failure. And it's the same thing. We have this continuum. If um, so, I replaced like failures on the other end with uh, with, uh, with transactions or something like that. Uh, with uh, low observability, you're just guessing. You don't know what's going on. You observe like a very small thing. Um, you know, like an astrophysicist, you're like, oh, okay, well, that light was kind of at that frequency, and we, you know, we have a theory that says that it's that, right? But if you could go there and you could travel there, uh, you can observe it directly, you're highly informed, and you can make highly informed decisions. Um, so the other thing, like, I learned about metrics um, are a few, are, are two, I mean, there's all sorts of things about metrics. Metrics is this massive topic of statistics and and probability and all sorts, I mean, you can, you can do all, so much with it. Um, but there's, there's, two, uh, there's two models of collection that like, I think are central to uh, understanding good metric systems. And one um, which is not that important to what I'm talking about today, but is, is record-based. And um, here I have an example of a log line that we emit in the Docker registry uh, when at the end of a request. So um, here we can see that, uh, so this is like Logress, if anybody's familiar with the Go logging library, and we have um, a, a bunch of little uh, keys, and we can see some very interesting information. We can see like, hey, uh, the URL at v2 was requested. Um, we can see that it was, a Git, uh, uh, it was a Git method, and we can see something very important. How long did it take? That's actually really slow. I, didn't, I should have uh, done a faster one. Um, but yeah, this is, this is, so this took like five milliseconds, 5.4 milliseconds. Um, so, um, what, what this actually is, uh, is a tuple of information. And if we take a whole bunch of these records and we aggregate these, we can get, we can uh, learn information about how this system is running. At the same time, I can go back and I can say, um, hey, give me all the log lines with this request ID, and I can see what happened in the course of this request. So this is, this is a record-based um, aggregation model. And, it's, or sorry, record-based uh, metrics collection model. And what you can actually do is take this data and you can slice and dice it in all sorts of ways um, and, and really kind of understand what your application is doing. And it's, it, it's great if you don't know what metrics you're collecting beforehand and if you want to be able to be as flexible as possible and not really think about too much before actually taking your metrics. Um, the downside to this is it's really, 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 really expensive. And what happens is not only are you storing all of these log lines, but if you want to take these and process them right away and get information, you're going to spend CPU cycles on the, on the nodes that are running your application. You're going to, uh, each time for each thing that you're indexing against, this index is going to cost you memory. So like, what is this, like 10 different things? You're going to have to have 10 different indexes or, or, or some, some, um, some level of storage, depending on how you do it, if you, uh, if you build like compound indexes, you, you're going to pay for that as well. Um, the, the storage can get really out of hand. Um, and in practice, we, we actually found this to be the case. So when I first joined Docker, the request volume, so, so we were processing these, and the request volume was 
um, I don't know, 80 to 100 requests per second, something like that. Um, nothing big. Um, and we could just dump everything into Elasticsearch. And it was awesome, because you could be like, all right, um, OK, what happened? Oh, we found this error. Let me go get all these log lines and these errors. And we could do it in Elasticsearch, and we can slice and dice and, and really get nice information. Um, we could aggregate, and we could get like uh, response time histograms just by uh, bucketing the response duration. We could do it. We could slice it by Git. We could slice it by uh, URL. We could slice it by, you know, whatever, right? And it, it was great. But what happened was, as our request volume increased, like everybody's request volume hopefully increases if your company's doing well. Um, we'll uh, so like what happened? So we started out and we were like, okay, let's store three months of data. And then we're like, you know, things are going slow, and oh man, these things are falling over. And there was like two months of data. And then like, uh, like I went on vacation, I came back, and it was like, oh, now we store three days. So, um, <laughs> so, you know, we could have gone. We, you know, there's, there's companies that can do this and scale it for you, but you know, we, we could have gone with something else. And um, but it turns out like this isn't really um, because if, if you have a small volume of events, it works really well. But if you if you have a huge volume of events, it's um, it's, pro it's problematic. Um, and so <laughs> uh, I didn't mean to make these like so, uh, you know, like, like oh, here's the simple sample-based model. Um, but uh, it is. It's simpler. What you do with a sample-based model is you store many, much less information about each metric, but you're sampling it at a regular rate. Um, and there's, there's, you know, there's some like, ma like mathematical complexities of how this works. Like you need to sample like uh, twice the frequency of the thing you're of the of the ob of the frequency of observation you want to um, observe. Um, you, that's like Nyquist or Shannon's theorem. Um, and oops. Uh, and um, but and but the thing. So you don't have all the advantages of the record-based model. The record-based model you end up with the situation where um, so so you can really query your data. So so a sample-based model you actually um, you'll actually say, I don't know much about, uh, or sorry, you need, to think, you need to know what you're going to collect beforehand, right? Because all these samples, you could tag each of these samples uh, with, with data, but like, you, 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 you need to bucket them by the attributes ahead of time, right? Because these end up being like, like columnar time series on, 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 on disk. And I'll talk about a project here in a little bit that, um, that has made this super efficient. So, um, so, so those, those two models are like, like that's kind of like my, that's how I perceive metrics. Um, there's probably a hundred different opinions about um, how it can be done. Um, but the big question is here, why aren't they built into everything, right? Like, um, like I said, I'm, a, I'm, I'm not a great metrics engineer. I will go get the metrics that I need when I need them. My goal is never to collect metrics. But my goal is to minimize the time that I am collecting metrics. Some people love metrics, and I love them for loving metrics, because they can make our life better. And there's great people who've done this. And, um, and we, we also have this great platform, Docker, uh, if you've heard of it. Um, and what, uh, you know, if you take these two together, you have something that is running your thing that you're trying to use, your application, your service, whatever. Um, and you want to observe things that are going on. Like, it's like, why can't we actually build this into Docker? Um, so, well. I have all sorts of excuses. Um, well, I believe in a record-based model. That's the first one. Uh, the Unix thing is, uh, you know what? If <laughs> if there's nothing coming out of standard error, everything's fine, right? So, uh, you know, it, it, there's uh, you know another one is like, oh, we you know we don't have a standard format. There's, there's a lot of great excuses. There's just a lot of silliness, and, and we're engineers, and we love. We have so many good opinions. So many good. I mean, my my opinions, of course, are are the best and well-reasoned, but I'm sure you all have great well-reasoned opinions. Um, seriously, we all have opinions, and it really, really factors into this. So why, uh, I, I guess that leads to the question is, why aren't they a part of Docker? Like, why don't I just have my Docker container, um, and then I, now I have metrics? Because Docker knows, like, a lot about your thing, what you're running, um, and, uh, you know, I could just run Docker, and now I have metrics. Well. Um, so let me tell you what the goal is here. So the goal is actually, um, I don't ever want to build a metrics system again. I just want to go like, hey, I want to measure this thing in my application and use a, lot, and, and use a package. So how am I going to do that? I want to make it so that in Docker, uh, you only need to uh, be running Docker to actually have 
uh, an entire metrics pipeline ready for you to go. And um, so the goal is that you just put your application in and you, just, and, you, and you declare some declaration. We haven't designed all this yet. We're still working on it. And you, and you make some declaration. You say, this is how you collect metrics. And then it happens. And then whatever system you're in, however it works, uh, you get everything you want and you have uh, infinite observability. So, um, so skipping to the punchline, we have, uh, we have started integrating Prometheus. Now, um, why Prometheus? Well, um, they have opinions. <laughs> um, no, I, they, like they, they, have, they have a solid reason set of, uh, a, a, of approach to metrics that is very, very simple and particularly interesting to Prometheus um, and what makes it such a great candidate for this is it has a standardized format that it exports to. Um, and next slide, oh, whoops, that should be, so here's the format. Um, so uh, the format's very simple and it's cut off at the end here, but let's use imagination. Um, so, uh, so the format is very, it's, it's just a text file. Um, I think there's a protobuf format too. Um, and you just name the metric and then you can like have little labels on the metric and then way off in the end here, I should have ch chosen a way shorter example, there will be a number corresponding to this thing. And that number uh, will tell you what is, it, what is happening. We, we also have some other interesting here, uh, cool stuff about this format, is we have help. So you can say, hey, what is this metric? And then there's a human readable, the number of something. It, it, it's important, but it's on the other side of this slide here. Um, and then we have a type. And so this one's a histogram. So these. Um, on the end here are actually histogram buckets. So um, this, is, this is pretty nice, right? Like this is very simple, I can understand it, I can look at it, I can observe, um, and I can probably aggregate. Even if I don't, even if I disagree with everything else about the Prometheus project, there's not much disagreeable about their format. Going back to it. So uh, we have, uh, so Prometheus has uh, four or, uh, I, I'm putting summary and histogram, you can go read about them. Um, but so there's basically four types of metrics. Um, there's counters, which are just uh, things that you're, that they're monotonic, they increase forever. So like bytes, so you say like, oh, a byte came by, all right, plus one. Um, and it never, it never decreases. Um, you have gauges, which are values like, oh, how many bytes do I have on my disk? Uh, 10, 20, 15, um, you set the value. And then um, there's, there's a type called um, summary and histogram, which do very similar things. Um, and uh, the differences in, in how they're aggregated and the aggregation point. Um, this link right here is the best way to go understand it. And, if, um, and you will look at it and be like, huh? And then you play with it and then there's less questions about it. So I don't want to get too deeply into that into this talk. Um, so uh, the other thing about Prometheus is the configuration is pretty straightforward. Um, so I'll show you a demo in a second with Docker. Um, and uh, the only thing I put in the configuration file was this. You have like a scrape config, you name the job whatever you want, um, you tell it how often to scrape it, and then um, you give it a target. And um, we'll come to this target bet in a second here, but like you can see here, you just have these static configs and you can say, hey, this is where my target is. So um, with, with that, I, w I didn't want to get into that in this talk, but yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, so um, well, I, I can a little bit in this slide. So so Prometheus, uh, like you just like uh, the gentleman just here said, is a pull-based system. So um, earlier in my, I, I was talking about uh, sampling-based. Um, you can look at the pull process as kind of a sample point, right? Um, and so the way uh, so this is kind of an eye chart, so don't worry too much about it. But this is the basic architecture of uh, Prometheus, and there is a um, there, there's a central Prometheus server that goes, where is it? Oh, right here. Um, and it goes out and it will uh, discover services and then go out and then um, it will uh, scrape uh, the um, like pull metrics right here. Um, and then it will kind of aggregate them into the storage and then you can query it. Um, and then you can have your different kind of dashboards querying that same data. And then you can also push that out to something called an alert manager. Um, and the other interesting thing is, so I was talking about like record-based versus sample-based, and um, so uh, you can also look at that argument as another side of push versus pull-based. Um, so it also, there's something called a push gateway, so you can do, 
um, uh, push metrics. And so push metrics are, are kind, of, kind of like record-based. It just means that like you have metrics, your app application sends them to the point they're going to. Um, uh, whereas Prometheus is kind of scraping and sampling. So uh, I suggest you go check, check out the docs on Prometheus. I didn't want to get too much into it today um, because I have a demo. Do I have time for a demo? Yeah, I have time for a demo. Okay, so um, in Docker 1.13, uh, we have integrated uh, Prometheus support. Um, and this is, so, um, so the way Prometheus works is you configure these targets in there and you just say, here's this web endpoint, go scrape it every so often. Uh, and if we look here, and if everything's working okay, we can see, let's actually make this way, way, way bigger than that. We can see that like this, this metrics endpoint was scraped uh, 1.8 seconds ago. And if we reload that again, we reload it really fast. Yeah, there we go. So you can, so you can see it actually scraping those metrics. If we pop open this format, we can start seeing our very, 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 very simple uh, metrics format. And so like here, uh, for example, is a, uh, I think they're histograms. Yeah, so here's a histogram, and we can see that um, this is the engine demon network action second bucket, and, um, and this is basically saying uh, it's lower, anything lower than five milliseconds uh, goes in this. So it basically counts histogram buckets, and so if we like, we like look at this, um, we can see like, oh man, you know, there's a lot that are, that are greater. So, so this, is, this is basically cumulative, so as you go up, you get, uh, you add more metrics, so like um, this means five are greater than, uh, than, than 0.25, and this means like 40 are greater than 2.5, and you can kind of set these histograms to be able to measure, and you, you take this data back together, and you can assemble this like nice little uh, histogram um, thing. So, uh, so how does this work? Um, so this is actually the Docker daemon. I have it bound right here, and, and I can load it again. Um, if you are in, 113, which I have on my Docker for Mac beta, which well, if you're cool, you have, right? Um, and so all I did, and I can't make this bigger, I'm really sorry, um, but all I did was, well, th there's another secret thing I did too to make this work. But in your regular Docker daemon in production, all you need to do is go into the daemon config and bind a metrics address for the Docker. We separated this from the Docker API so that like you can have different kind of access controls. You could bind it to a Unix socket. You could bind it out on the, uh, the network, or you could bind it to local host, or, or whatever you want to do. Um, so the, um, and so what this is, I, this has kind of been running all day, like it, it didn't take long. It took me a little bit to figure out, there, there was a secret trick uh, getting this to work with Docker for Mac, and that took most of the time. Um, but it's been scraping for a while, um, so that we have data. Um, and, you know, so here is uh, the most important metric, is, um, we'll execute this again, oh my god, this is uh, the go mem stats alloc bytes. And so I, we have this metric, metric in here, and this is actually just in the go runtime, and we can see that like um, we have some nice chopping. Um, it looks like we've been doing GC. Um, and so we have, we have two time series here, let me see if we can go down a little bit. There's two time series here, uh, and the, so the way Prometheus works is you, you have, um, you, like you can see there's a job here, and this says, so the, um, the green one is actually uh, Prometheus memory allocation, and then the red one is actually uh, Docker, um, which I will investigate. If that, doesn't, that doesn't seem right, that's crazy that Docker's only using 30 megs. Um, and so these, and, and likely these chops are um, probably GC frequency. I'm sure we could graph it against GC frequency. Do we wanna risk that during the demo? I don't think we can graph them against each other, but let's see here. Um, so you see, uh, oh, I can see it here. Uh, so GC seconds count. Okay, so this graph. So I can't graph these together because you need to use Grafana to do that. But if you look at here, and then we see, oh no, that didn't work. Okay, next demo. Um, okay, so what do we have here? So this is um, this eye chart here. Uh, if you'll believe me, is the 90th, 90th percentile histogram for um, the 10-minute uh, uh, rate of uh, actions in seconds. So there's nothing here right now. Um, and so let's execute that to prove it. And we can see down here, we can actually see the raw data in the console. We can say NAN. Okay, Ooh, what happened there? 
Uh, well, it turns out I haven't used this for anything in like the past um, hour or so. I've been talking. Um, and so what we're going to do is we are going to start up some containers. So, and I'm going to do it the fun way. I'm going to use Docker uh, service scale. I'm going to scale up. Oh, uh, let's 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 roll at 40. Cool. All right, that was fast. Um, and then, oh, wrong. Go. Oh, then, see here. If we execute this again, and the demo gods are, oh my god, the demo gods are not happy. Oh, and then, oh, the other way, the other way, the other way, the other way. Come on, there we go. And the demo gods have been graceful. Um, so we can see here, uh, and uh, for the eagle-eyed in the room, you'll notice that there's two colors here. Uh, one of them is container create, uh, and I apologize, this is a terrible, terrible demo. Um, so this is start. Um, and then there's also create in that same line. And so basically I'm graphing the uh, starts and creates uh, at the 90th percentile. And so right now the 90th percentile is roughly a uh, little, little over nine um, seconds, I guess. I don't know. We, we need to validate this data. We're still learning about Prometheus, but like we, we, we have high hopes for the future. Um, here's another one where we're doing like container action seconds count by action. And so this is actually uh, calculating like a rate average. Um, there's a bunch of other things you can do. So you can you can do this in Docker 113 today, and I think you have to en enable experimental mode. And like I'm sure there's craftier graphing, and people have a lot more time that can put together like a Grafana dashboard. Um, so what, what so so what what is that? What like what happened here? What are we doing in this demo? Um, so this is just so so at this point in Docker today, we have uh, we're exporting uh, the basic Go runtime Prometheus metrics, and we're exporting the um, like, like measurements for con container starts, stop, uh, a bunch of events, we're, and we're recording the events. And we're recording um, the uh, uh, like, like network events and stuff like that. So this is, this is, for, this is for us um, and contributors. Um, as an operator, you can test it out. We're not, we haven't stabilized all of this API yet. Um, but like this is this is just the tip of the iceberg of, of what we really want to do. Like I said, I don't want to build metric systems anymore, um, and not that I've built good ones, but like hopefully this will be a good one and we can all use it. Um, so uh, so you know we got we got a lot to do. So uh, so I opened up in so there, there was a distributed system summit in um, Berlin in October, and um, we met with the Prometheus guys, and um, we had a great time, and we figured out a a reasonable roadmap for the integration of Prometheus into Docker. Um, and so that, I've documented that roadmap. There's, um, uh, there's not much con context. It's a, it's a big, giant arc of work. Um, but hopefully we've broken it down into, uh, into like five big projects, one of which is kind of done. Um, so, uh, so the first one that we did that I just demoed was Docker engine metrics. Um, and this is basically for, God, that's tiny text. Um, this is for contributors and maintainers to better understand the performance of the Docker engine. Um, and so you can already hook up to Go metrics and get like, hey, how much uh, memory is the Docker engine uh, using? How many Go routines is it using? Um, and uh, this is implemented in 1.13. So the next step is uh, getting rid of Docker stats. Um, Docker stats is uh, a push-based record model. Um, and uh, so, so, so one is not better than the other, but for some cases, um, the scraping model is much better. Um, and so uh, this will be able, what you'll be able to do is scrape uh, container, uh, CPU usage, memory, anything like uh, with Docker stats, this is the plan. This is what we want to do. Um, and there's, there's some details that we need to work out. Um, I've uh, highlighted some of those questions in the roadmap issue, um, and we have good notes and a good idea of what we're going to do next. Um, so the next thing is integrated target discovery. So Lots of different, um, uh, so, so one aspect of having uh, uh, Prometheus is this, this concept of being able to discover targets. So like you saw in that config um, that I had above before my demo, I had manually said, here's a target. You can actually configure Prometheus to hit another endpoint, which tells you where all the targets are, and um, it will uh, come back and tell you what to scrape. And we want that to be automatic. And so now, what, so with this and this, now you can like basically monitor all your containers, right? 
and um, and then uh, well, you know kind of the next cool step, um, and this is this is the this is the big one, and this is uh, kind of the what you know what we're looking to do um, in the future. And it's going to take a while, but um, we want to directly proxy the like your metrics, your application metrics, out of the Docker daemon and leverage that built-in uh, tar integrated target discovery, so that like when you're running Docker, you can just uh, you know just have the Docker engine there, and then everything works, and all of a sudden you have metrics. So um, that is the end of my talk. Um, uh, I want to thank you all for listening. And um, is there any questions? How will the application metrics, or you have like an API, like a SDK or something, where you have to export it, or a certain? So, oh, okay. So, how do you how do you instrument your application? Um, so, uh, so. Yeah, that, that's a talk in itself, but um, and I didn't uh, touch on it here. So, but the idea is, um, you just you you have to go. So, Prometheus works by exporting like an HTTP API in, on your application. So inside of your application, you use their uh, library package, and then you can increment your counters, right? And and it'll show up into this in this HTTP API. If you're already using some other metrics package to do that, you can write something to convert it into the um, Prometheus metrics format, and the idea is that um, that becomes the lingua franca of, of metrics for uh, that, that um, Prometheus will be able to directly access, and then your application will export that, and then the Docker daemon will be able to like proxy that target discovery. Does that make sense? Does that answer your question? Okay, yeah. Or like, like, are you talking about as a user, like, or like as an application developer specifically? Well, I was thinking as an application developer, like. Just, yeah. So yeah, for for like greenfield stuff or like uh, things that aren't already instrumented, you would just uh, use the Prometheus packages directly. Yeah. And that's it. Any other questions? Um, so I think uh, I'm already using Google C Advisor, which like automatically gets a lot of these metrics, like container yeah. specific metrics already. I guess what's What's this integration with Prometheus going to do that C Advisor isn't doing? So C Advisor might go away. Okay. Like um, if we if we do things right. So like if you go back to if we talk about um, externally observable metrics, I should have made the point that this is basically what C Advisor is doing today. Um, I like I don't know if we'll be compatible with C Advisor because um, uh, in our discussions with the Prometheus folks, they they. Uh, said that C Advisor does a few things with the way they export their metrics, which will cause like index explosion. Um, but we do need to look into uh, how that how that might work. So, um, but as far as the use case of C Advisor, we want to cover that. Um, I don't know how, um, like, you know, if C, C Advisor want to, wants to get involved or help with this. But the idea is that rather than everybody trying to run C Advisor. On their Docker engine, like it just kind of works because it. I mean, it should be there, right? Like, I don't want to build metric systems again, and I don't want to figure out how to get metrics out of things. So, um, you know, ideally, this is all integrated, right? Cool. Thanks. Does that answer your question? Yeah. Cool. Any other questions? We got the the box. There um, some GitHub issues already that you can subscribe to to follow these issues. Yeah, yeah. So I have it up here. It's the roadmap issue. Okay, and then uh, there's yeah. sub issues linked to it. Yeah, it's twenty seven three zero seven. Okay. Yeah. Um, I mean, so right now it, there's not there's not a lot of there's not a lot of information in there. Um, like, unless you're adding to it. Like I ask, like let's keep like everybody wants this, but let's keep the conversation down there. Unless you have something like. Like a real, like a like a good question about like, hey, um, or just open another issue and reference this, and then we can talk about it. Like, um, this issue is is going to get contentious because um, there's been several PRs for to integrate Prometheus or Prometheusy things into Docker, and I don't want this one to fail too. So, <laughs> uh, but yeah, this is the issue, and you can subscribe to that and see what's going on. And uh, like, the progress is probably going to be a little slow, but like, we want to get it right, and we want to want to. Solve this problem, right? Any other questions?
Alrighty. All right. Thanks for your time.